Good evening, River of Life. So good to be with you this evening through our internet connection. I truly miss you. Uh, we miss being together, but we are thankful that we have the opportunity to at least have this connection. And tonight I want you to be encouraged that we will get through this, that will come a better day and a different day. And while you're on the inside uh, for a while, quarantine yourself with the Lord. Don't just, uh, you know, veg out on the on the movies and binge on those, but take time to spend with the Lord. I want to take a little time this evening on Bible study and talk about a subject that I think many people are, are going through, and that is the things we are thinking about in our heart and in our mind. So two scriptures tonight. One is Proverbs 23 and verse 7. And it's Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And the second one is Matthew 9 and verse 4. And it says these words, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think these thoughts in your heart? So even Jesus is aware that we think things on the inside. Unfortunate situations happen in our life, events and activities and it is easy for us to get into the mindset of thinking negative things or things that really aren't with the subject of faith. I want you to know that we are not victims right now. Uh, we may feel like we don't really know what's going on, and, and we're asking God a lot of questions about, Lord, when is this going to be over with? In the midst of this, we're going to trust the Lord, and we're going to believe God to take us through all the way to the end. Now the devil will come and he will try to get involved in your thought processes. Make no mistake, the Bible calls him the father of lies. He loves to insert things into your psyche. He loves to tell you things that really aren't true. And understand that information that comes in your mind, it comes from one of three sources. It either comes from God, from the devil, or from yourself. And so you and I have to analyze what we are telling ourselves. Is this something that's true? Is this something that lines up with the Word of God? Or is this a fear that I've been dealing with for a long time? Is this wrong information that I've had stored in my psyche since I was a young child that I'm letting bother me? Or is this just an attack from the devil? Now the Bible tells us this. In Proverbs 14, verse 12, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Just because you think it doesn't mean it's exactly right. Just because you tell yourself this a hundred times a day doesn't mean it's right. So be careful what you allow in your mind. Everyday stress or responsibilities, things that are happening today, all these accusations coming by the devil. And the, and the Bible calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. He loves to accuse you and I. And maybe you're telling yourself some things like, well, it's never going to get any better. What are we going to do? You know, and fear can come in to our mind. But the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love and power and of a sound mind. So let me encourage you how to respond. Learn to respond to life and what you're thinking from the area of wisdom rather than emotions. That's a tough thing. Don't let your emotions respond, but rather think about what you're responding and how you're responding and learn to do it with wisdom. Now, often as we go through life, we get stuck in ruts and We've responded a certain way for a period of time, and we're used to that. And this is where we have to really analyze ourselves and ask ourselves the question, am I living in fear? Am I living in negativity? Am I thinking thoughts that really I shouldn't be thinking? You know, God wants to reveal His nature to you and me. He wants to show us exactly who He is. So when we begin to tell the Lord our fears... God wants to tell us His nature. The Bible says this, that God has often told us, I am who I am, which means God is God. We start with who He is. God never changes. 
He's incomparable. He's incapable of changing. And so the Bible says when we know God, then we can know who we are. And so the Word of God says this, that when we know God, then we can also know what God says we are. In other words, whatever you need to be in God, God will help you. He is your shield. He is your king. He is your Lord. He is with you. And I promise you, we're going to get through this. You are not by yourself. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe that a lot of people do talk to themselves. They say things to themselves. And the problem is that we're not really honest with ourselves. We often tell things to ourselves that's way too good or often way too bad. And the truth is somewhere in the middle. You know, every so often I may be at the store and I love to talk to the Lord out loud just in the day-to-day -day part of life. And, and I'll just talk out loud to the Lord and somebody will catch me. And I'll just look out of the corner of my eye and know that somebody's looking at me. And so it's kind of funny, really, but uh, people thought that I was talking to myself. Can I tell you, rather than talk to yourself, talk to God about some of the things that's on the inside of your heart. Remember, there is a big gap of what we think and what we tell ourselves and what we say to other people. Would you agree? There's a pretty good size gap. Let me explain. Usually when people hear us, they hear us say the very best stuff. We want people to think good of us, do we not? We want people to think that we're sane and we put our best face on. And so we want people to think we're the sanest person they've ever met in life. And so often when people go through their day, they have a really good face and they show things really uh, positive. But then as they go through life and they go, go home, things change. And then they tell themselves things they shouldn't be speaking. For example, right now many people are speaking things during this coronavirus epidemic. And they're speaking things that are just in defeat and destruction. I want to encourage you. We're going to trust God just like we've always trusted God. We're going to believe God. We're going to have faith in the Lord that He's going to take us through. You and I have to take our thoughts and bring them under the captivity of God. Bring them under the Word of God to make sure they are in alignment with what His Word tells us. You know, when these thoughts come in and we don't do that, they, they, they cause us to tense up and they cause us to get fearful in life and it will destroy your joy. The joy of the Lord will be gone. You know, we can still have joy. We can still sing. In fact, I encourage you right now to make your home a place of church. Normally, people are coming to the house of the Lord, but I want to encourage you to make your house at your home the house of the Lord. We can't really gather right now because of the restrictions, but learn to have church at your kitchen table or in your living room. Learn even to share communion at home and make it a place of the joy of the Lord. Let me give you a couple of points tonight. Number one, people tell themselves stories in falsehood. You know, there are situations that you've experienced, certain stimuli in your life, and things happen, and if you're not careful, those things will become pieces of interpretation that will cause you to get fearful and cause you to even get depressed in life. But we have power and authority over those thoughts. We think the good thoughts of God. We take the negative thoughts and we put the blood of Jesus on top of them. And we say, no, we're not going to think like that. We pray for people and we pray for this situation and we trust God. One day, amen, we're looking for the conclusion of this. Now, often the problem is when we tell ourselves things, we accept it. We never question it. We believe what we're telling ourselves is absolute truth. Just because you tell yourself something a hundred times a day doesn't make it right. You can speak it over and over and over again, and you can believe it to be truth, but that doesn't make it right. Line it up with the Word of God. Secondly tonight, God's truth will set you free. One of my favorite scriptures, John 8, 32 and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, once the truth gets in you, and once the truth gets there, 
It should produce something what I call fruit. Here's what the Bible says. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, and then it says that you will bear much fruit, John 15, verse 7, and verse number 8. If. Did you know there are 1,522 ifs in the average Bible? Meaning, if we follow, if we believe, if we trust God, the promise of God always has a condition. We have to trust and believe His Word. And so when we read the Word, it exposes a condition that's on the inside of us that's an incorrect condition. Now, we will tell ourselves things, and we need to tell ourselves things that are things that are in alignment with God's Word of power and authority. I like Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In fact, I'm going to begin a daily devotion uh, that will be a walk through Psalms beginning this week. But let's go to chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners. His delight is in the light of the Lord. On, on, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. And there are some great truths here. When we are planted in God and His strength is feeding us, one will always be refreshed. Number two, our leaves will not wither. You know, there are a lot of people today uh, that know the Lord that should be producing more fruit. They should be more successful and effective in, the life, in their life, but they're down, they're fearful, they're resentful, they're non-productive, they're bitter. And they should be happy working for the Lord. You have to shut off that negative information. You have to tell yourself, I am not going to think like that. You know, a lot of people will take truth, and they'll take falsehood. They'll listen to both pieces. They'll listen to that negative and that positive, and they'll get, they get blown back and forth like a tumbleweed. Here this way, and then here this way. It's important that we have the belt of truth on and that we believe what the Word of God says. It tells us in Psalm 42, As a deer pants for the water, so, Lord, does my soul pant for you. When you look for the Lord in His presence, you're going to find encouragement. But when things come up in your heart and mind that aren't right, you've got to begin to say, Now, wait a minute. That's not really the way that God's Word needs me to believe and think. Let's go to point number three. Putting your past behind you. You may have had mistakes in your past. Everybody has. You could have served God a lot better maybe last year or the year before. Can I tell you, forget about that. We're not worried about two years ago. We're worried about today. Today, you are more than a conqueror. Today, God's Word tells you you are righteous in Christ. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to confess this with me today. What's up here on the screen, let this be a good confession of your soul. God's word is true. I am what it says I am. I can be who it says I can be. Who I am is based upon God's infallible word of truth. Would you say that with me one more time? Out loud in your house? God's word is true. I am what it says I am. I can be who it says I can be. I am who I am is based upon God's infallible word of truth. Isn't that a good thing to say? What his word says I am is absolutely who I can be. If you tell yourself that long enough, you'll believe it for long. Let me just tell you a couple more things and we're going to conclude tonight. I want you to take his word and inject it into your spirit. During these very uncertain days, we need the help of God. And so, inject His truth into your mind and spirit, and like a Holy Spirit vacuum, let God just suck out the wrong things. Let Him suck out the wrong ideas and the wrong beliefs and the false information. And when you begin to base who you are on God's Word, when you know who you are, life is a lot easier to live. Everybody's going through hard times these days. Everybody is wondering what's going to happen. But church, I want you to know something. I want you to know that Christ is our strength. God is our help. 
Pray often. Pray often in your home. Pray often as a family. And remember, we are going to get through this. Even though I, we're not there yet, I see the other side, like I said, Sunday morning. And we're going to get to the other side. Listen, I want to pray with you real quick and asking God's blessings on you. So would you just lift your hands up there in your home and let's pray together. Father, thank you today for everybody that is with us. Thank you for River of Life, for Tipton County. We pray blessings upon all the families in our church. They would be encouraged today. Encourage God in everyone in our city and everyone in our town that you'll protect our state. And God, we pray that America will be delivered from this virus. We thank you that you are the deliverer. Lord, our faith ultimately is in you. We trust you and we believe you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just give you a couple more pieces of information. If you'd like to contact me, I want you to do so. On the screen behind me here is my email, gregtemke at gmail.com. It's also on our church website. Here is my cell phone number, 901-486-8465. And some people have asked about our church's mailing address. We don't have a physical box at the church, but we have a post office box. So you can send any kind of correspondence or prayer request or a tithe and uh, an offering to this address, P.O. Box 806, Mumford, Tennessee. Thank you for letting me be with you. My wife Bonnie and I tell you we love you. And remember this last thing, Jesus Christ is Lord over everything. God bless you. We love you.